should probably go with this crowd anyways until Jim gets here. That way the, the fans at home can at least see what true beauty looks like before the ugly guy shows up. That's true. <laughs> and now that we're live, we should just uh, formally say happy birthday to Mike. Oh, yeah. yeah. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Mike. 30, Thank you very much. 38 again. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I've always said I, I, I celebrate – Anniversaries of my 21st birthday. That's great. I've done that for awesome tactic. Awesome tactic. I'm getting nothing, close nothing to my like golden. It. I'm getting close to my golden anniversary on that one too. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So that's fun. How's everybody been, Ray? How's uh, how's how's your last few events go for you? Uh, good. I feel like I haven't been on in a little while. Um, we haven't done one for a while. No, so yeah, apologies been, to everybody out there. It's been a busy uh, couple months just managing all the things, life and work and being a dad and playing pool a little bit here and there. So uh, constructive, you know, had some good wins and some good positive outcomes from a few different things. Marching on. Yeah. What's your what's your schedule going forward when it comes to serious events? Um, there is a, a World Nine Ball Tour event next month in Virginia that I'll be competing in. Uh, like a local regional thing. And I just got word of uh, one of the first U.S. Open qualifiers that are coming up uh, that will actually be here in Florida. Um, so I kind of have that bookmark that hasn't been announced yet, but um, I'm going to be going to that, I think, in uh, June. And hopefully we start getting more details about U.S. Open qualifiers. I think Frank Maialetti, um in the Philadelphia area, he's having a big event that might also be a qualifier as well. I'm starting to target those because I want to. I want to go to the U.S. Open for sure. Yeah. Um, and so right now, you know, it's kind of like waiting to see what happens with those. There's a there's a, a bunch of other ranking events that are on the calendar that I'm going to try and go to that should fit my schedule okay. Um, like there's one in Seattle, I think, in September, and um, a few others around the country that I'm probably going to go to. Maybe to Oscars in in uh, California. Wow. And, Franks in Philadelphia. So I'm targeting all the, the smaller regional ones. Um, I think once the qualifier, um, uh, once the qualifier thing kind of gets more fleshed out, you know, next season, I probably will target the majors more and play less of the regional events and then just shape my time around trying to get to qualifiers until I can get a toy card. So that's, that's yeah. going to be the, the plan. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Good deal. Mike, sir, I need information. Information. Hall of Fame. What's going on? Talk to us. The Hall of Fame. Shane's in. Well, are you? Yeah, Shane's going to be the Hall of Fame winner this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's got an outside chance. Uh, yeah, no, we're working now on getting the uh, the ballot put together and getting it out as soon as possible. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. Um, you know, the, the assumption is that Shane will be, you know, uh, elected this year, inducted this year, right? So um, we're not sure about where we're having to banquet this year. There are a couple of options, uh, one being the Moscone Cup and the other being the International. Um, Florida, baby. It's Florida's year. Let's go. Which are both going to be in Florida. And uh, so, you know, I want to be... I think it's important for us to be able to let them market the event knowing who's going to be inducted. So, you know, especially in, a, in uh, the situation like a match room, where if we did it there, it would be very nice if they were able to market with their ticket sales, especially their VIP packages, that, you know, um, there's also this banquet's going to be held with Shane Van Boney's induction, you know, something like that. So. Uh, it was just a matter of uh, it's just a matter of trying to get all those kind of things lined and you know, aligned at the same time. So yes, uh, ba long and short of it is, ballot should be coming your way in you know a week or so. I'm excited. I think uh, Shane. Has, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to vote for Shane. I think he's got to do what, at least one more win before now, uh, <laughs> before he gets my vote. But I, well, I, I mean, it's an interesting. It's an interesting year because you've also got Carlo uh, Beato, Guy Carlo Kim. Uh, uh, eligible this year. Guy Kim is eligible this year. Um, so, 
uh, you know, are either of them going to, you know, get selected ahead of Shane? No. But um, could two players get elected in the same year? It's possible. It's, it takes a lot. It takes 75% of the vote. Uh, uh, you know, both players would have to get 75% or be named on 75% or more ballots. Um, and that's very, you know, it's happened once before uh, with um, Allison and Johnny Archer uh, in the same year. But other than that, you know, it, it's, it's tough. You know, there's, there's most years where players don't, you know, there's been years where the winner hasn't been 75%. So um, it's a tough, it's a tough Hall of Fame to get into. It's going to be 90% plus this year, I promise you. <laughs> Now, just out of curiosity, Mike, um, and I don't, I don't, I doubt you know the number off the top of your head, but there are how many active voters for the Hall of uh, Fame? I think fifty-two, if 52. you include the Living Hall of Famers. And then, how many of those fifty-two uh, vote actively? Um, you know, it's usually in the. Um, well, no, it's it's more like sixty. But we usually get around fifty votes. Okay, about so, fifty okay. voters, and it's 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 closer to sixty, um, you know, total voters with the living hall. It's of actually a good return. Well, I mean, yeah, it's it's a good return. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. There's there's years where I I have to badger people and track them down, uh, but, but but it's you know it, it's important that they vote. I mean, if if you've got if you're in a position where you have that voting privilege and something like this, I think you owe it to. Um, you know, the people who are on the ballot to, to give it an effort. And the ones that, you know, not surprisingly, the ones we have to chase down the most are the, hall, the living Hall of Famers. So then it's always hit them with the guilt trip of, listen, you got into this Hall of Fame by people voting for you. You owe it to these people on this list to, you know, share your thoughts on which of your contemporaries you think needs, you know, should, be, should join you. So that usually works. Well, you won't have to chase me down, promise. No, they, you know, the, the USBNA <laughs> members are usually the, 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 you know, they're they're very responsive, which is great. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah, so. Out of pure curiosity, what's the criteria for being able to vote? Being able to vote, uh, if you're a living Hall of Famer, okay. and then there is a, um, uh, the group, the U.S. Billiard Media Association, which isn't oh, really okay. just U.S.-based people, but uh, so... We invite people to be uh, in the association if enough people, you know, on the existing USB and they feel that they kind of fit the parameters, which which are kind of loose. But it's basically, listen, if, if you're involved in covering the sport and you've been doing it for any length of time and have uh, uh, respect around the community as being someone responsible and knowledgeable about, you know, yeah. or great players and who've helped the game and things like that, then, then you know, we would like you to be part of the USBMA. Okay. So and and then, then, yeah, then there's another category called Friends of the Game, which kind of includes yeah. historians and promoters who also have a good perspective on, on uh, you know, who, who's, who's helped shape the game. Yeah, I was make sure you were going to cover that. So... Um, I don't. I, does uh, Ray, Bob, do you have any other questions for the Hall of Fame? Uh, just no, to, not just really. It's gonna be Shane. It's gonna be Shane, I guess. So uh, it should <laughs> be. be one for sure. It's. It yeah. seems super, super difficult not to have Carlo Beato in, but maybe Carlo Beato doesn't want to get in. Well, yeah, and I mean, guy on Kim too. Maybe he doesn't want to get in this year because he wants to have his own year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, here, yeah. That's there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's 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 you know, do you and and what happens if it's at Moscone Cup instead of it's, the international, right? You're does the Carlo opening Beato, act. Does Carlo Beato fly from the Philippines to Florida for one night, turn around, go home, and, or sit around for a couple of days and watch Europeans play Americans in pool? Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's. I guess it's one of those situations where it's like, do you want to be the opening act for Shane too? Because you know that everybody's there for Shane. Yeah. Or do you want to have your own year potentially? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, he'll, he'll kind of be out of you think he's got you know, a pretty decent chance of, of getting into Hall of Fame. And so it doesn't matter which year. He's a promising up and comer. He might be someone someday. How long did it take Perica to get in? 
a long time. He was on the ballot for many years. If you are on the ballot and and do not get elected by the time you're 60, mm -hmm. you fall off the ballot and then you go into a separate pool for every other year. We uh, talk about veteran players, you know, players from either pre Hall of Fame days and dead for 100 years or more current players who just didn't get elected through the normal process. And there's a committee that reviews those and says, well, it looks like we missed the boat here. This guy yeah. clearly should have been in. Uh, like a Parika. Parika got in that way. Right. Nice. So yeah. he's one of the greats and it can happen, you know. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I will respond, if you don't mind, to Aaron Blake about associations nominating people to vote. Um, you know, the whole thing with, with uh, Halls of Fame in a lot of cases, if you look at other sports Hall of Fames, it's usually people who are independent and, and don't, you know, have a direct affiliation with a group or a team or a player or whatever. Uh, and, and journalists have always been kind of, media have always, has always been that kind of, uh, looked upon as that kind of voter. So once you start getting into associations, it gets a little bit funny on, on the, uh, the independence and the, the credibility of the voter. If that makes in, sense. In, in soccer, I understand the, the 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 idea, but in soccer, for example, which is very popular in Europe, obviously, uh, it's different. There, the um, let me see that I'm having it right. All coaches get a vote, I think, um, of all soccer teams. Hey, Jim. Yeah. So you know, you, you always worry about it becoming a popularity so, contest. Um, you know, in golf, yeah. in golf, there's automatic qualification. If you win X number of tournaments or X number of majors or whatever, you're automatically in the Hall of Fame. I hate that. I, I, I like it to be a more, you know, I like voters, uh, you know, which in most sports, at least in the U.S., professional football, professional baseball, professional basketball, that's the way it's done. So that's the way we structured. Uh, yeah. That's where we convinced the BCA to allow us to structure the Hall of Fame voting because in the old days, it was just the BCA board of directors who would sit in a room and decide who was going to be in the Hall of Fame during one of their board meetings. And then it was really a popularity contest and, and you know, you lose credibility. And if you're going to have a Hall of Fame in a sport, you want the fans to think of it as something that's credible. Yeah. I think Jim, it's probably... Speaking of Hall of Famers. There you go. I'm ready. <laughs> it's the anyway. Moscone Cup fan Hall of Fame right there. Jeez. That's right. There should, be, there, should be, there should be a fan's Hall of Fame. Yeah. The Railbird Hall of Fame. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just as all, listen, as long as I've got my uh, my seat already reserved right front and center for, uh, for Shane Van Boning's Hall of Fame this year. Well, you won't be front and center. I guarantee you that. Yeah, so it's just Maybe. in the, in, in the room. It's somewhere. usually family. It's usually like family front and center. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll get you a good seat. <laughs> Can I have a good seat too? Can I sit with Jimbo? I want no, to see that's Jimbo. no. See that's what I mean. That's not a good seat if I have to sit beside Nate. I want to sit by Jimbo. Jimbo and I are friends. He's You're turning into a shit really Robin for me. My night. <laughs> He's turning into a shit Robin for me. I'm a busy man. He's a busy man. That's what he is. Yeah, you started uh, early. You said he's winning tournaments. He's winning tournaments. What, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you yeah. doing, Nate? Yeah, I'm out there winning <laughs> national titles. You're he's just going sitting around cutting them down. You're sitting around letting your hair grow so you have to wear a hat for a podcast. <laughs> no, I just haven't showered in a week. Well, there you go. It's been too busy, you know. Hey, I, That's the like reason he doesn't want to sit with you. How you was like that? That's, uh, this, is, this is Shadow Tight. This is Mika Eminen's line. Oh, so let's give a shout out to Meek Eminen. Uh, he's looking like his chemo worked. It looks like he's well, got a real good chance of being cancer free. Pretty awesome. Yeah, I watched. Him. Yeah. I watched. Him. Close, yeah. I watched Mika at the expo, uh, just warming up, and I, I watched him just get down and hit some balls. And I was like, God, this guy is so talented. Like, he just looked right. You know, like there was yeah. never a beat that was missed from last year till till now. And he just was, you know, good flow and like hitting balls crisp and, you know, like 
no lag at all. And I was like, man, this guy's such a fighter. <laughs> so I think you, go, you probably get back to the table with a little more, um, you know, focus and purpose. Oh, yeah. You like you've been given a second chance, right? Oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Him and Darren, right? Well, yeah, I was going to say, talking, talking of second chances, there's Darren just snapped off his first title since he had his, uh, his health issues. Yeah. 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 That's well, good maybe, to see as well. Uh, as soon as they posted those odds, I was like, boy, Darren at nine to one looks like less than nine, nine to one on any eight ball tournament is just yeah. silly. I but, but for him to be nine to one, I mean he's he's a he's a he and Melling were definitely yeah, you know, he should have been I mean. that's what I mean. That's what I mean. They should have been like four, they both should have been like four to one. Yeah, there's the, the, I don't I don't think there's a field you could take every single all the best play but eight ball players in the world and put them together in a field and Darren Apple is still not nine to one to, yeah, <laughs> to win that tournament. Sure. Really? <laughs> Yeah, he he's awesome. Well, I, I didn't even see the odds. I just saw the names. I'm like, well, Darren's on my short list of like one or two guys that I would yeah. look at right away, just from knowledge base. And then, you know, he's playing on on the bar table, so it's like, you know, and he's hitting the ball well. Like I saw him at Super Billiards Expo, hitting the ball well and fighting and playing good. And so I'm just like, smashed FSR right, like nine to one or something like that. He beat. He no, beat, it wasn't nine to one. It, it was a close um, he beat 11, 11 9 i think he'd be 11, 11 9. 9 i think it was yeah, yeah it was 11, he beat he beats uh was it who did he play first round in the 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 final 16 then was that i'm thinking he beat somebody like 11 to 1 what are we uh, talking about the expo yeah yeah i can't remember the bracket i ha uh yeah i don't remember but he was playing really well and hitting the ball good and looked energy was good so seeing that list i was like well Darren's playing like Darren plays and, you know, this eight ball tournament should really favor him. And, um, you know, he stuck with it, showed he's a champion. So congrats to him for sure. Yeah. yeah. Mike, Michael, oh, sure. let's, what did you think about bar table eight ball? Did you watch much of it? I did not watch a lot mm -hmm. of it. Um, okay. uh, I, I did see that it, it was exciting. It was fun. Um, you know, it had a little twist. I, I'm not a big fan of, I mean, I think bar table eight balls is cool. I'm just not a big fan of it as far as following it as a as as a pro you know a pro part right. of the pool, uh, a professional part of the pool. So, uh, but it was certainly fun. Yeah, I think I think it's the I think it's my favorite game to watch. Bar table eight ball. It's too congested. I mean, you really get to see a lot of breakouts. You get to see a lot of pattern play. You get to, I mean, I would like to see the the pockets tighten up. I think they were four and a half inch pockets. I think those pockets needed to be a little bit smaller. But I like bar table eight ball. You, there's yeah, there's just fun. not a lot of there's not a lot of there's not a lot of windows there's not a yeah. lot of lines between up and down table i mean you really got to have a tight cue ball and i think it's i think it's really fun to watch how the the players play their patterns it's, it's entertaining it, it certainly shows a lot of skill it's just not to me where i think professional level pool should be i think i, I watched a little bit of it and i found myself like having fun watching it just because of how ridiculous some of the like, <laughs> 15 second shot clock, you know how dumb, like I watch guys like really feeling the heat of the clock and they're just doing certain things that you would on an eight ball table, you would just say, this is brain dead. This is like no IQ. We're just going, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's a novelty to that. That's like entertaining, you know, but uh, I think there is some strategy too. There's some little subtle nuances too, to the English rules that are a little bit different than like, american pool so it's kind of cool to see where those come up but it's also cool to see positions where like you see guys that have like like actual tactical knowledge and something like a one pocket developing patterns and opening things up in certain ways and some of the announcers were you know you know clueless to some of that but then you see it and you're like oh that's really intelligent but you know that 15 second gun it's like man it's like so brutal and it's like they what i didn't like about uh, some of the stuff was what the commentators were like, oh, this is an easy out. This is, oh, this is like, they're just glossing over the fact that you're on a 15 second shot clock. <laughs> Even though the table size is smaller, the pocket size is the same. So you better be careful with your cue ball because like we saw what happened with Tyler, like he made a really crucial scratch and that cue ball is really, I mean, it's everything. And, and yeah. you know, when you, when you only have 15 seconds to shoot, it's like, it's hard to really map everything out and kind of, you know, really control things, but it's fun to see it kind of see the different strategies and different things, you know, how they work. So it was, it was definitely entertaining to watch. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. I think that's the idea of it also. It's, yeah. uh, 
it's it's fun yeah. to watch but i also agree with mike like it's entertainment it's it's kind of gimmicky yeah. it's it's nice to watch but it's nothing to build professional pool on it's just yeah, I, don't, side, I don't think side I, don't think that, uh, I don't think that that's what the you know the battle plan is anyway no, no, of course. Uh, so so you know it is what it is and you take it for what it is and and that makes it to me easier to like than if than if it was trying to be positioned as uh as carl boys likes to say hashtag eight ball takeover uh, yeah. so uh um, so yeah i mean at that point no i would i you know i wouldn't want to see you know our pros selling pool by running around the table you know uh, like they're late for dinner so earl yeah. strickland special i'm sorry no side earl strickland special yeah God. 10 second shot clock and no side pockets <laughs> That him, running, him running around a seven foot table with a nine foot cue is kind of to <laughs> eight ball. Eight ball is like the you know globally the most recognized game, sure. probably. Yeah. You know, yeah, sure. so it's, it's always been the argument for it. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean that's why the IPT was eight ball, uh, all that. But um, you know, it, it's, at some point, pool just kind of has had to put its eggs in one basket and, and carry that basket on, and it's not eight ball. I mean, ironically, it's it's the world's most recognized game, but it's also the world's most complex set of rules, right? I mean, how many different sets of eight ball have oh, you played God, in your please. life? Yeah. How many different sets of eight ball have you played in the last month? <laughs> yeah, right. It's 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 the it's the easiest to, it's the easiest to identify, but it's the hardest to understand. Where nine ball is very easy to understand. You know, you know, you know that America is the only country where it's difficult to understand. Everywhere else in the world is very easy to understand. Oh, we've used this, we've used the same set of rules for since the game started. I don't. I think I've I've played two different sets of eight ball rules, and one uh, one of them is the the English eight ball, and one of them is the American. That's it. Yeah. That's only two rules I've ever played. English yeah. BCA. Because well, in, in yeah, in, in America there was no arbiter for what the rules were. It was like. You know, I have a league. I have a system. I have a this. These are my rules, and, well, and that's what play. So, I love from you know, different bar to bars. I'd love changes. to see the English eight ball guys play last pocket eight ball. Against there you them. go. <laughs> <laughs> Take what you make yeah. last pocket eight ball. Just completely lose their mind. Forget it. They just quit eight ball altogether. They had to play yeah. those rules. Oh my god. There's a there's a uh, there's an event at uh, the uh, the Cam Room in Beloit every Friday. It's take what you make, bank the eight ball. Interesting. <laughs> it's kind of fun and yeah. stupid all at the same time yes yes but that's that's part of it. it's the gimmicky part of it right i don't know i thought it was really fun to watch i i think i think uh, i think, I, I think, I think, table eight balls. Something there. I think bar table. i've got a good system there i think they, they, i think i think i think it works I, i'd agree with you i think the, the pox have to be smaller uh, I, I disagree a little bit with raymond what he said about the commentators the fact is that on those tables, those runouts are easy. They're, they're, but in order to make them not easy, you have to do something, and that's where the fifteen-second shot clock comes in. If you well, didn't have, I, a shot, if, if, I couldn't watch bar table eight ball if players were taking three minutes every single shot. It would just be awful because on those tables with four and a half inch pockets, it is just shooty in with your eyes closed. It's stupid game. Bar table eight ball is a lot. I think I think that bar table eight ball is a harder game than big table eight ball. Just because the, the, you're just so much more congested, it's harder to get from one side of the table to the other, and you're going to have more clusters. Completely I mean, disagree. Not... Completely disagree. You can you can play bar table eight ball without using a rail. Yeah, it's easier to get beat than bar table eight ball. Well, it depends how the table breaks too. I mean, if the table is like if if you go back to like the predator event, uh, the the world eight ball, if the table's breaking like that, uh, that's significantly easier. On a uh, on a bar table than it is a big table, I think. I mean, all the, all people were all the players were doing there was just smashing the rack as hard as they could, breaking dry, and their opponents were running out because everything was wide open. At least with at least with the 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 bar tables, there's still there's still congestion. You still have to run into balls. You still have to break clusters. You still have to play tight patterns. I think you're more likely to run a six or a seven on a bar table than you are on a on a nine footer. But even even with some of the clusters, but. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think it's a fun game. I think it's. Um, it is fun, and the shot, uh, the, 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 not so much the shot clock. The shot clock, it's the, the match clock that makes it interesting. 
Yeah, exactly. The match that, court rather than the shot clock. I mean, the that shot is something you, awesome. want. you can make it 20, you can make it 30, but it's the match clock to know that you've got yourself like three frame lead, alternate break. You know, there's like eight minutes left on the match clock. You can start playing a bit tactically and a bit, you know. Somebody, somebody made a funny, a funny comment. They're like, it, it's ironic that in speed pool, it becomes like tactically appropriate to play slow, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, but not necessarily slow, but like you're saying, drag it out a little bit, play more detail. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wait till the beeps to play your shots. Trying to, and you're, you're you're also trying to calculate it so as so as to make sure that maybe you can give two frames away, but the third one's never going to be possible. You know? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, sure. It's, it's, there's a lot that comes into it. And there's some players watching the ultimate pool on the English there's, on the English table. There's some players that are very very good at it, and others that have tried it and made a complete mess up of it <laughs> and left themselves too short a time themselves. And it's uh, it's it gets quite entertaining. Um, but yeah, I, I think if there's any future in it in the, the ultimate America, then then I would like to see them tighten up the pockets. That's the only thing I would say. I think the rest of it is it's fine. Where do I, 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 I watched just 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 now when I was uh, uh, just getting uh, Lily ready for bed. I had it on Facebook and I was watching Billy Thorpe playing, and he played a cutback uh, bank, uh, short rail uh, uh, bank, and. He hit the long rail just underneath the middle pocket, and it sat in the pocket. It almost dropped. I mean, this is that for me. When you're banking a ball seven, uh, only you're only banking a ball seven foot, and you're still hitting the the long rail just underneath the side pocket and almost making it. I mean, that's stupid to me. That that's that's what makes them operate. That's right. proper pool, buddy. That's proper that's pool. That's that. No, see, that's that's what that's what makes me switch <laughs> up. That's what makes me switch off and think this is. So, Mike, you've seen a lot of these different types of leagues come and go across your time. Uh, IPT, uh, I mean, well, I don't, know, don't even need to get into all of them, right? We've, we've seen a million of these things come and go. Do you think this has staying power? Um, but all the leagues that have 90 different rules all have staying power. I mean, they're all still around. They're all still, you know, playing with tens of thousands of members. So, uh, people are willing to play different rules. Um, you know, it, whether or not this has staying power is going to be strictly a matter of do people like this type of format? And, you know, it, it's it's strictly to me a tournament format. It's not a league. You're not going to have a league of ultimate pool uh, okay. because it requires too much. It requires too much oversight, you know, in terms of clocks and and shot clocks and that time total time and that kind of thing so so it couldn't be it couldn't be to me it couldn't be adapted into a a league system so does it does it have a chance as a, a tournament system for around the country i think it has a great chance because it's fun and it's entertaining and anybody who plays in any of these various eight ball leagues would give that a shot because it's still eight ball it's just something different than their league has so everybody loves the challenge of things like that. So I think that, that tournaments like this, I think they could do, uh, you know, it depends on how it's marketed and, and pitched around the country. I think it could do very well. Yeah, that's right. Anything you want to add to it? <laughs> Am I talking out of my ass or what? <laughs> no, I, I, I completely agree. I think as, as far as the eight ball goes, it, that, that, that one's got the most chance of actually be, becoming something as far as eight ball goes. Because, like you said, eight balls, it's not a game that streamers don't want to stream eight ball matches because the camera equipment has to be too good, you know? So they, that's why we don't see so many eight ball matches streamed. It's very, very difficult unless you've got really top quality lighting and top quality camera equipment. It just looks like a mess. That's why straight pull very rarely gets streamed properly. It's very difficult to, to, to put yeah. up a stream for yeah. straight pull as well, you know? Um, but if they're if they're willing to do this and they're, they they bring their equipment to all the tournaments because they need to have the, they need to have these clocks on every single table, which is not easy to do. Right. You know, it's not easy to oversee that. If they're willing to do that and they can get the and they can get together for a tournament that are 128 or you know, let's say 32 tables and and they can get them all set up to work flawlessly, I think there's there's definitely a market there for it. Players will yeah, want to do it. One of the things they have going for them is that they're not affiliated to any association or yeah. any league, right? So these are just just independent tournaments. It's like, oh, here's a fun tournament to play in this weekend. You don't have to worry about whether or not it, it conflicts with your league membership or you're playing in someone else's league or you have to sign a membership form or anything like that. It's just just independent events. So I think it's I think it I think it can do really well.
and you, and I mean, you, you, not as much Bob, but the the, the other three, you'd know mm-hmm. better than me. I get the impression that finding finding good quality bar box tables around the country and clubs with good quality is, is a lot easier than finding good quality nine foot tables around the country. It depends completely on where you're at. I mean, if, if I'm just talking about at. Wisconsin, Wisconsin, nine foot tables, you can't find one, but the yeah. bar box tables are everywhere. Yeah, but if you go to New York City, you can't find a bar table. Okay. It just completely depends on where you're at in the country. And and California is mostly big table, if, if I'm not mistaken. New York, Florida is mostly big table, although Florida has a little bit, a few more bar tables, but it's predominantly big table to my we understanding, right? We have a lot of right? eight-foot tables, too. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. It's like a, yeah, that was a, that's, a, that's a strange one. Eight-foot tables were made for people whose house just wasn't quite big enough. Yeah, well, we have a few pool tables. <laughs> A few pool rooms that have most like <laughs> mostly eight foot tables is weird. Really? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. yeah. Eight foot's a stupid size of a pool table. It's it's the most annoying thing ever. I don't know. I'd rather see an eleven and a half foot table. Who's uh, making a noise? Who's like tapping their pen on the table or something? Bob. No. no. Me? No, it's my can you hear that? I'm just tapping my finger. It's weird. Sorry, yes. guys. Oh. Be, I've been, I've been on mute, so I don't think it was me. You're such, a, <laughs> such an amateur. Just look guilty. Bob just looked guilty there. He, when you said that, Bob just went. <laughs> uh, Bob. <laughs> so what's what's the latest in the uh, in the pool world? Or what do we have going on? Is there anything? Well, going? apparently, you don't even have to be a pool player now to play in matchroom events. What do you mean? Yeah, no, you can just be a, football, can be a player. football player of, of American or European style. Yeah. There you go. I got a question, for, I've got, I've got a question for all four yeah. of you. Had any of yeah. you ever heard of Troy Deeney before? No. Yes. I mean, no. I still haven't heard of him. No. And that, and, and that, that, I'm sure we're going to talk about it, and that will be the crux of my point. Okay. Yeah, he's probably just a regional draw for whoever the footballers are, the fans in the UK. <laughs> I have but no this idea. Is what, I mean, I, well, okay, look, I get it. I, yeah. I completely get it, you know, um, and I could get on board with the, the, the snooker players and stuff like that and trying to attract attention, mm-hmm. trying to bring fans in from the snooker side to watch. I can fully understand trying to get fans from from other sports, you know, to get to build up an interest to come and watch. I fully understand. What I don't understand is why this, why him, because unless you're actually from the uk or a massive football fan i'm assuming there must have been there must have been some he kind of reach, there what must have been some him? kind of reach out from him or somebody you know i don't think it was just let's pull a, a player randomly out of head there yeah. must have been some no. kind of reaching out Wait, we're talking about the, we're talking about the match we're trying to build a world audience what countries in the world are now going oh i'm going to watch that because troy dini a footballer I've never heard of before in my life who has uh, who scored who scored a very famous goal that only people in the UK know about and has so never, my, played, never played international football, never played Europe in the European's best biggest stage. He's now playing in it. I think I'll go and watch that. Nobody is doing am, that. Am I stupid for saying that he's just knows how to play pool? Like there's gotta be some reason. Maybe he's one of the only footballers that knows how to play pool. Right, I mean, it, it, it would it would make Jim's point is not whether or not he can acquit himself at the pool table as much as it is he's the he's wild card thing. He's a hook, but he's a hook that nobody's going to get hooked by. Exactly, well, it, so, it's, it's, it's a hook that, that that isn't appealing to anyone right. other than maybe some people in the UK. Well, sure, yeah, well, but you know, I mean, you, it, maybe, maybe that's what they're maybe that's what they're working on. Okay, let's try to get more people onto Sky to watch it uh, because we'll de- just develop. If we can pick up some more fans to just watch the sport, and they come watch matches after he's eliminated in two rounds, then then we've won. Well, that, 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 that indicates to me that he's going to be on the TV table straight away. A hundred percent. When do he? He's going to He's going to hit the ball. He's going to hit the ball four times, and then he's going to be beat nine nil. Well, you, well uh, the, the, he might get the Judd Trump treatment where he gets the, the weakest player in the field, right? Yeah, but then, you, and, see, but, then, but then you have to see them. Then you have to see them, and then you're going another step further. If you if you put this guy a football You don't have player, to see them. You could just, you could you just literally, you could literally you go do. through all of the seated players and just like handpick the weakest one that you think on paper and just put them up against him. He's, he's still gonna get. He's gonna. He's still gonna get absolutely pumped by him. I'll play him for a million. I, I, well, oh, well, I would assume so. I, but the, but that's the thing, right? Like like 
that's the thing, right? So, I mean, if, if you're going to do the same thing and try to get a boxer involved, it makes sense to go get Manny Pacquiao. One, because not only is he well-known, but he is... also knows how to play. I just have to assume that this guy can play at some basic level, that he's not I, like some I, I hacker that doesn't awesome. know what gender I, the cue I, I, I think. I think he's a guy that, 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 that has hit a ball that probably had a that probably had a pool table in the recreation room at the football club that he used to play for kind of thing. You, did, did you see that video that Jason Shaw did where he played against the darts player? Gerwin Price. No. And he did a thing and yeah. he played some he played some pool against a dart player, Gerwin Price. Gerwin yeah. Price, he could stand over the queue, he could swing the queue back and forward, and he could hit some balls. I'm thinking this is pretty much the level that this Troy Dean is going to be at. Where but that's your, all, that's your assumption, we, Jim. We don't know. We don't know. For all we know, he could play as good as Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. He could play at like a 650, 675 Fargo type of player. You want to make a bet? Yeah. I, I'll bet against 650. No, no, no. no, no, no I, I mean, I'll I'll bet bet against I'm, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing. But, I'm just saying, like, possible. It, it's possible that he plays way better than any of us have any idea. Yeah. Well, Can you know we? what? You know what? If, it, if he does, we'd know by now. Because yeah. some because somebody would know. Somebody within the pool world would have known and would have come up against them and would, would, would know that the guy can play and we'd have already found out about it. When do we get to see Jason on the soccer pitch? That's what I want to know. Oh, God. Yeah, right. put him in, okay. Please put him in goal. <laughs> Don't make yeah. it. Wrong. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, the only thing I'm saying is yeah. that's the only thing that makes sense to me because I don't know who he is. Um, like, I still don't know who he is, and I've I've seen the poster like 35 times. I just have to assume that they're not going out and just getting some random hack who doesn't know which end of the pool queue to use. He's at least got to be an adequate type of player that, you know, maybe could run out an open rack. Maybe. And, you know, Matchroom could end up doing this, the thing where the, you know, who's Joe Schmo, the weakest sponsor, or the, the weakest um the weakest seated player they're gonna happen to draw them and then they're gonna be happen to be two players next to him that don't know which end of the queue to use too and next thing you know he's like judd trump and he's in the third round of the the, the a side and every time they're getting 50 million viewers per match i don't think that that there are really any weak seated players like there's weaker players right yeah, yeah but they're, not, they're, 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 not, they're not weak enough to get. They're not weak enough to lose to a yeah. guy who well, plays not with, with that. these mates having a beer. Well, that's that's why I kind <laughs> of brought up Manny. That's, why pretty much, that's pretty much the level I'm expecting from Troy yeah. and I might be completely off it. He might be an absolute genius. Well, that's that's it, why I brought up somebody like Manny Pacquiao. It, it might be the only reason he never became a professional pool player is because he was offered a multi-million pound soccer sure. contract. Yeah, yeah, right. Otherwise, he would have been a pool player. <laughs> It's possible. That's the case. It's I'm possible. Gonna, I'm going to bet with you that that's not the case, but it could well be the case. But, but, but that's the reason why I brought up like a Manny Pacquiao, because Manny Pacquiao could be, absolutely could be, a seated player if he had a good match and he had a like a weaker seated player. Yeah, but it's not. But it's not Manny Pacquiao, is it? What's Manny Pacquiao. Sure? Manny Pacquiao is all over the internet playing pool. This guy's never been seen playing before. Do you think he really can be that, that good if he, nobody's ever seen him play pool before? Of course, he's. I'm cool. hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, well, Jim, I'm assuming, Probably not. Jim, I'm assuming you think from a marketing standpoint, it would be better to invite Manny Pacquiao to play in the Asian Open. Or Joe yes, Logan. I would imagine that would be an incredibly good marketing employer. Yeah. Oh, guaranteed he's going to get a spot in the Filipino yeah. or whatever. Filipino Absolutely. Or Joe Logan. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. And, I'd, sure. and I'd be completely behind that. This one I find difficult to get behind. I hope it has the but, desire. To but perfect. why, though? But why though? Because there's a, a, a player that's uh, trying to qualify and the spot is missing. What's so well in the long uh, run? In the long, I, I understand what you're saying, and and that sucks for one person in the short term. Because I don't see the, the value has to outweigh right. what right. exactly. You're doing. Yeah, and I don't it, think it, the value outweighs the fact that this guy is taking a place that people you're, are trying you're, to find you're losing okay. one player in the short term, but you might end up increasing the prize funds for. By fifty thousand dollars, and next year when that player comes around and does get their chance, they're now have way more. You know, it's it's about the long haul, right? It's I understand that you're you're That's losing a short term game say. for one player. That's what but I, was going to say. I I would like to see. I mean, okay, so Jim, what do you think? Joe Rogan, I, I'm guessing is right around a six hundred Fargo, give or take. So you think this guy's well below that? You you should go play Joe a set, Nate. See how I think Joe Rogan's above six hundred. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, I think. So. What do you? What do you? I think. I. I. I personally. I, I mean, 
just on just on what I expect from somebody who's a footballer, like the dart player, blah, blah. I would say this guy probably falls into a 550 Fargo, something like that, 500, sure. at, at best, at absolute and it, best. And really, the point, Jim, I think that you're really trying to, to make and that we probably shouldn't stray from is that I don't care if the guy plays 700. Yeah, exactly. He's not, gonna draw, he's not going to draw any more attention to the event than, you know, the guy who didn't get the spot. And can you imagine? Can you imagine? Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let's say, let's say he ends up getting drawn against a qualifier or another wild card who turns out to be absolute pants as well, and somehow managed to get through some easy qualifier somewhere. Now they use this guy to to so they're going to put him on live TV. They're going to stick him out there. The drawing's been given is against another hacker who somehow managed to slip through the net and get through. And this goes on live TV with these two guys banging rails for two <laughs> hours in a race to nine. Do you really think that's good for pool? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to watch no, no, more no, no, matches. Wait. We have to assume. We have to Honestly, also I think assume, it is still guys. Because then the next uh, people come on and you see how good, like, talented actually they actually are. I think it is good for I, pool. I think we also have to take into account that the people in Matchroom know what they're doing. And if they and if they put up this guy that they have an idea behind it and they thought it through, I don't think they were like, oh my God, we're missing a player. Yeah, Troy D. So <laughs> I think at some point, I understand the the the, the idea of he's not going to do something, uh, probably... I'm assuming but it's not, he but, 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 but he's not there to win. He's not there to win pool matches, Bob. But I completely understand the idea of having Troy Deeney yeah. there is not to be competitive pool player and to win pool matches. Of course, it's to attract another audience and attract another audience. What I'm saying is, maybe I don't really think that audience exists and certainly does not exist outside of the UK. So as far as a world audience and creating a world audience and bringing people in, it's not going to work with Troy Deeney because nobody has a clue who he is. I still don't I know knew who, he, who he was. I will be back in a minute. I still don't know who I, he is. We've been talking about him for 15 minutes. He's, I, going I, his, he, he's, going he's a professional ID soccer jersey. He's a professional soccer player from England uh, who's retired now. There, Nate. Oh, he's not even active. What? He's not even active? Uh, I don't think he's active now. Uh, no, he's no, a, I, he's I, an actual pro pool player. Yeah, he's a pro I, pool player I, now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think he um or is he active maybe in the lower regions, but no not active anymore on the highest level at least. Yeah, okay. Maybe he dropped down a little bit. Um and he got some name recognition because he because he scored a very uh uh well uh seen goal uh because the, it was a penalty for uh, penalty kick for the other team. And then it got saved, and then they countered in 10 seconds, and he scored the winning goal in the 97th minute of a game or something like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. You can find so it on YouTube. Press in Troy Dini YouTube. So he is basically the... I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and apparently don't Joe like Rogan soccer? plays... Not much. You don't like Apparently Joe Rogan right plays now? a lot better than I thought he did. <laughs> I mean, I thought he played in the 600s. I didn't think he played that high. Joe Joe's pretty solid. He's taking lessons with like Max Everly and a few other people in Vegas, and you know. Yeah, I mean, I knew that, but um... no. Obviously, if you had someone like a Joe Rogan or you had someone like a Manny Pacquiao in your, then you're going to get eyeballs that you wouldn't have already got. In uh, an ideal world, you'd get Manny Pacquiao for like the Hanoi Open. Maybe you'd get Joe Rogan for the U.S. Open. Yeah, right. I mean, something like that. So, so that's you know, that's the hook you use. Hey, listen, that's what that's what it was with Judd Trump. That's what it was with. Steve Davis, Alex Higgins, Jimmy White, and Ronnie yeah. O'Sullivan in the early days of the Moscone Cup. Sure, right. it worked. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so they, they, you know, they're 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 not using a uh, an idea here that they that hasn't been proven to them. Yeah, uh, they're not using so, a wet noodle. Yeah, I'm just assuming that they know what they're doing and that yeah. they took Troy Dini for a reason. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's local coverage. Uh, maybe it's a deal they had with Sky Sports, like because I think he's a pundit, also an analyst. Maybe they said, okay. "Hey, take Troy," and then whatever the case may be, there will be a reasoning behind it. Yeah, we'll show his highlights on Sky Sports recap or whatever. Yeah, we'll yeah, and and that and that also attracts yeah. him because on Sky he's somebody who the majority of sports fans will recognize. So maybe then, there's an angle. They, 
the, yeah. the UK Open is coming up in what three weeks? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, I should know. I should know it. Um, yeah, you're running a qualifier, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm running a qualifier tomorrow, so I should know it, but I don't. <laughs> I'm checking my details tomorrow. Yeah, it uh, looks like May seventh through the twelfth. Uh, yes, yes, indeed, correct. I have it here now. Correct. May seventh to the twelfth. I got the documents to organize a U.S. Open and a, a, a European Open yesterday. So, yeah. This is, this is the the yeah. part, Mike, that that bothers me. On you know, like being on the outside, just waiting for the next chance I get to go. It's like so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Sit here and like, okay, I gotta wait. Yeah. 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 Cause there's no, cause there's no U S demand right now for big qualifiers for any of the European tournaments. And that's one of the things I want to do is go out, play one of the, at least one of the majors in Europe this year. But now mm -hmm. I fly to Europe to go play. I got to have to go meet up with Bob and go play. Well, his yeah. What they've, Come on. what they've normally done in the past, haven't they normally had a couple of qualifiers at the event in the days leading up to an event for like six, spot, imagine. eight spots, something like yeah. that. Uh, you know, if they do something like that, you can always take a flyer on that. Sure. Because yeah. then you can play multiple qualifiers over, a, you know, every day for four days. And, and are they doing it now, though? I don't think I don't so. Know. Because it I would be know. announced. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that haven't been announced yet that I think people would have liked to have had information on. Well, there's a, there's a, for, the, for the UK Open, there's an amateur tournament that's happening just before, and uh, the winners get uh, oh, yeah. a spot in the main tournament. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. You yeah, only, only hold, have one spot available in the UK before the Open? I don't know how many spots it is. Okay. But it's an amateur event, and there is qualifying spots, I believe, for the UK Open. How many? I don't know. I think it it's will be multiple. Spots. I have I, four now. So. I think it's mostly spots and only one stripe, right? Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Jim still yeah. who's, the, over. who's the mother? Ray's been, yeah, yeah. Ray's been kicked off the podcast yeah. for bad jokes. <laughs> I'm a dad. I'm a dad. I have a dad jokes. Uh, no, yeah. So I, it, it's it's uh, by numbers. Uh, I don't know how big the the qualifying tournament, amateur tournament is, but they give tickets out on based on participants. So. Yeah. Okay. From thirty from thirty two to sixty three, it's four, I think. Um, and it will change to two in the future, but initially they announced from 32 participants to 63, it's four tickets. And then as of 64 participants, it's eight tickets. Okay. Wow. So if, you, so if you've got a field of 64, there's eight people that are going to get a ticket. Yeah. That's tomorrow, I run the tomorrow I run the qualifier in Belenzo. You've been Jim uh, mm -hmm. and I have four tickets and it's a field of 38. So. Well, eight for sixty-four. That's good. Uh, that's good odds. I'm on my way. Really I'm on my way, pal. I'll be right there. Right? <laughs> Come on down, sir. I'll take. I'll, I'll take the first uh, British Airways uh, right night. Got to win three matches, huh? That's it. Basically, is what it comes down to. I'm in. Yeah, basically. If we have if we had if we had sixty-four, but we don't. So. So do you do so that as a single elimination, or uh, you do that as a single elimination? or double elimination, Bob? Double. Double. So you got to win yeah. three matches if you stay on the A side. and Yeah, three matches if you stay on the A side. Yeah. A bunch if you so, play on the B side. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially. And it's yeah, not I mean, an open draw as well, so get lucky yeah. with the draw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's the flip of the coin. If you get lucky with the draw, it's uh, possible. Uh, if not, there's no seeding there. So. The Wild West, baby, just like we like. <laughs> and are you? Are you? Is it? Is it open for everybody? Or are you only doing Belgian uh, uh, entrance? No, open for everybody. So we have Albanians, French, uh, Germans, uh, couple French, of guys from. Yeah. Jeez. There are uh, there are neighbors, Mike. There are neighbors. A <laughs> um, couple of guys of the UK also uh, dropping by. So, uh, yeah, open for everyone. You still taking signups? Yeah, sure. All right, There's sign me up. I'll, taking... I'll be over. I'll be over in about nine hours. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, got, it's got a nonstop flight out of Madison, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Open until nine fifty nine tomorrow morning, our time. Uh, 
So it's about uh, eight thirty-five in, right. in local. So I guess you'll be you'll be doing qualifiers for the European Open as well when that comes around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I received a mail yesterday for to sign up for uh, organizing a qualifier for UK and U uh, for uh, Euro and US Open. Yeah. Uh, is part of the prize on yours? Uh, their entry fee into it or do they just get a spot and they still have to pay their own way they just get a spot um because i'm keeping the entry fee really low uh as in 50 euros so 50 dollars basically um there are some qualifiers going around that are asking for a higher entry fee but then they also use that entry fee just to give Higher, like to pay the uh to entry. pay the entry and and stay or flight or or, or whatever the case may be yeah. um because i'm so close i i chose to keep it very open and and accessible and say okay 50 euros you get a spot but you take care of uh, uh, stay and and transport so yeah. yeah makes sense so that's the that's the only thing i had a question a lot though yeah, <laughs> is sure. it uh, yeah is it uh, stay included is it transport yeah. included? <laughs> first uh, class airfare hotel yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Only the WPA. all inclusive <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that we're going to do because we calculated it as such because obviously from the entry fee i pay the tickets so the entry fee pays the 250 dollar entry ticket um but uh with 64 it the price pool was calculated as such that it was almost uh even steven because there's also something to match room and then our expenses and such but now that we are less we're gonna have actually more money to spend right so i'm gonna uh, also give some some prize money good so then as it like a sort of spending mm -hmm. money or or something like that so yeah. i hope the players will be happy with that i'll take first place and two waffles <laughs> <laughs> you can <Wow>. okay <laughs> they, Take a semi-final spot and some Brussels sprouts. What do you think? <laughs> Candy Brussels sprouts. Uh, yeah. I don't know what else we got to talk about. Well, uh, Jason snapped off the Jason Expo yeah. and the Expo tournament, yeah. tournament yeah. Went as a Jay Flowers pool player. So, I guess that um, yeah. trip down to. Um, the Legends of Pocket Billiards fast straight pull run kind of gave him enough time to figure the equipment out and put it to good use. He looked good. Five hundred and sixty. That yeah. seems to be, that that seems to be his go to uh, to get sharp and to get in stroke. Uh, yeah, worked for the Moscow good. Cup last year too. I mean, it, it keeps him on, it keeps him on the table for like twelve hours a day, and it, it just you know. Yeah, I mean, he 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 just gets into the motor and gets so immersed. You know, it's like you just dive right in and see how many balls you can run and. You know, it's um, you know. Plus, you have a purpose trying to snap off your your record. Five sixty is pretty incredible. You know, it's a pretty high run. Well, and um, beat the record that has been in place for sixty years prior, fifty years, whatever it was before John beat it. Yeah, it's the third time it's been cracked now since since uh, since John did it. You know, so it's pretty strong. Yeah. Didn't, didn't Jason have like a about five thirty two? Huh? Yeah. Didn't uh, didn't Jason uh, on his way to seven fourteen also have like a five thirty something? No, yeah. he's only he's only been over the five twenty six twice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is the second time. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. He had, he oh yeah. Had a high yeah, yeah, high run with his. Yeah. Ah, five oh eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Still unbelievable. It's great. So, Raymond, yeah. what did you think about the format there uh, with the reaching the final sixteen and then having undefeated players play each other and single loss players playing each other? Yeah, I mean that's kind of goofy. I think it it leads to it, it's kind of like you can almost uh, lose a match on purpose to avoid, you know. Exactly. Well, but then you lose. But then you lose money. No, you don't because you still keep going through. Yeah. Well, I mean, if yeah. you if you win your match, but if you if so, if you were from the winner side and lost your opening match versus if you were from the B side and lost a match, a the person who lost. It's a thousand dollar difference. Okay, but, no, but, but what which happens also, if you, which, which you, get, you get you get to the winner you get to the winner's qualification and you mm -hmm. see that if you win through the winner's qualification, you're gonna get probably filler. 
Or you can lose a winner's qualification, play a lower ranked in the loser's qualification, and then be in the loser's bracket against maybe three yeah. other. I mean, it depends who you get. You take that. You you take that risk. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, get, it depends on who you get. Yeah, yeah but you, I mean, are you going to trade? Are you going to trade? I'm saying you'd be stupid not to think players are looking at it and going, is it in my sure. benefit to take the risk here? Sure, sure. Well, no, allegedly, I, I, allegedly Jason said that he kind of took a fly, you know, just played flyers against, who did he lose to? BJ? BJ. Yeah. yeah. Just, well, BJ played really well on him too. Yeah, so he did play fun. really well, but Jason kind of said that, that, that listen, playing in the lose, being in the loser's bracket was not going to be the worst thing that ever happened to him. So he played with that in the back of his mind. Yeah. So no, I, I think it did affect his focus on winning that match. Yeah, it's definitely a strategy, you know what I mean, that can be employed. And it's only because you have control of that. You can say, well, if I, you know, lose this match, then I can go over here and play, you know, play great, you know, play. Yeah. I would not insinuate that he dumped, that he lost on part. I'm just saying that that, 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 that that did had to play a little bit with his focus in that match was – you know, yeah. I'm not going to be as disappointed losing this, missing this ball. It might have been if I was going to lose a spot in the final 16. I think well, the no, 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 not saying that anybody dumped, but what it does is the the system gives the possibility. It's just, it's just and lazy. If the system gives the possibility. The system's wrong. Yeah. This, is, this, is a, this is a card that you can yeah. play. It's just a card that you can play. Yeah. It's, a, it's a tactic, right. and it's there. You know, Jason went on to win the tournament, so it worked. You know, for it worked out to his favor, maybe. Um, yeah. But I, I will say. Crazy. Yeah, I think the Expo is kind of is close to being like a really great tournament in in the United States. Right now, it's just a good tournament because you're dealing with certain things that you know you probably are kind of you would say are like unorthodox or a little goofy. So okay. like that format thing with the no redraw into the final sixteen, I think is kind of silly. You should just That's silly, yeah. redraw into second stage and whatever happens, single oh, elimination. Yeah. It's it, it well, makes really. It, that, that tournament has not been a really great term for a long time. Yeah, this long is the time. best it's been in a decade. In a while. Right? And uh, so, you know, yeah. that's I a mean, thing. I, I, think, I think you shouldn't really be a, a – you shouldn't be considered a matchroom ranking event if you're going to use a triangle rack. Um, it's, just, it's just too laborsome to get the balls yeah. you know, touched up and, and proper – and guys train all year to work on the break and discover the break, and then you basically neutralize it. You turn it into a crapshoot. Yeah. At some um, point, are- Matrim. At some point, Matrim's going to have to set hard and fast rules. I just think that they yeah, kind yeah. of let's let's get the bigger piece of the picture sure. fine tuned before we come back to this part. So I understand it, but they're not going to be able to go too much further without having to set hard and fast rules, even if they end up losing some qualifiers next yeah. year or, or smaller points events next I year. Think, you I, got think, it. I think this will be the last year. You're getting big enough to the point where you kind of have to yeah. do that next year. Yeah, I think I think, I think Matram, are, Matram are kind of in a position where they, they have all these events that are that carry Matram ranking points, but they don't yet know how many or even any or which one of them they're going to keep. So there's no point in setting all these rules just now if they're just going to say next year or the year after, you know what, we have enough of our own tournaments for our tour. We're not giving you ranking points anymore, you know? Because yeah. well, for, 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 for like somebody like me, it's like I would rather spend more money and go to just the majors because if I just know that these things are going to be in place, there's no nonsense, I don't got to worry about no. – when the draw is going to be done, what time things, whether there's going to be a Calcutta or not, that doesn't matter that I'm not interested in anyways, like whether or not they're going to use a triangle rack, whether they're going to have some goofy break rule, like all these things that I just, they're tiresome. It's like, a, it's unprofessional. I'd rather just go to the bigger tournaments and save myself the headache and the time and the money and, you know, then have to deal with like shenanigans. You know what I mean? Well, if they, I mean, if they, if they have a match or major every month, then they don't need all the rest of these tournaments. But these tournaments are still useful for building up a, I yeah, love a, 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 rank, a ranking for people to join the main tour. That's yeah, why for getting it out there. I don't think they'll go away, period. Because No, but they they'll, go get, they'll, they'll go away. They'll go away as a around them Because yeah. they're too important in building up the others. They're too important in, in each continent for allowing people who can't take a flyer on 11 majors in seven different countries mm-hmm. to 
to be able to go to all of them. So you have to be able to allow players to build up their points, build up their purse, build up whatever. So I, I think that the that the re, that the continental slash regional ranking tournaments are always going to be part of the system. I yeah. just think they need to get their arms around them more. I just yeah. I, I don't I don't think they'll hold I don't think in in, in the in they won't hold enough weight for the for the for the pros for people like Jason to continue to play them if they've got a major every if they've got a major every single month. But that's you know? the end goal, right? That's the yes, end goal. Exactly. Yeah, these, these tournaments yeah. are for the lower players to try and qualify. Yeah. Know, qualify the There'll end, end goal like is that Jason, Jason only start, only plays twelve of tournaments. Exactly. You start talking. Else? You start talking about two thousand twenty-five having a a Q uh, school for Q. people to qualify for the one twenty-eight. That's where these tournaments will have a place. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Jason, yeah, Jason, and players like Jason and Darren will still go to this event anyways because they're there for their booth on the side. They're there to make money and play the event as a side gig. Possibly. I mean, the, the booth that they have set up, I mean, that, that's what they're And doing. if Q school events, would they be allowed to play? If it's a Q school, then no, they wouldn't be yeah, allowed to play. Obviously. So it depends on how they, what, they're, what they're looking at as the future of events like this. But then the promoters have to agree to that as well. Right. You think, you think that uh, Super Billiards Expo ever has a chance of being a part of Q school, Mike? I don't think it has a chance to be a, ma a match room major, so yeah. it's gonna it's gonna fall wherever match room decides these events are going to be categorized as going forward. Yeah. The only difference is in one or two years they will say, "Look, it's our way or the highway. No more, no more wooden racks. No more this. No more that." Uh, with the qualifiers, yeah. we already have a hard set of rules, pocket size and all. Yeah. Makes perfect sense, right? You know, yeah, yes, cool, yeah. right? you should you should qualify based on the the material and right. the, yeah. the rules that you're going to be playing in the in the main tournament. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've I played I tried to qualify for a Chinese eight ball tournament and I turned up at the event and found out it was played on normal nine foot tables with five inch pockets. <laughs> well, I'm qualifying for a Chinese eight ball tournament here. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. No. Uh, uh, now I think as of next year they will uh, they will fix that I think. <laughs> Did you guys already had a part about about the uh, the World Pool Masters and and everything or oh, is it, has... no, we haven't talked about it. I think we'll no, do I a separate so. one for that. Hey, we'll do a Masters build up for that one I guess. Yeah, I, we can talk yeah. about the Masters I think next week. This covered most of the stuff. I mean we've been gone for a long time. I want to apologize to everybody out there. Uh, I haven't been doing them. I've been traveling like crazy. I was at the PLP, and then I had the Wisconsin State Tournament, and then I was home for a few days, and then I was just at the Super Billiards Expo. So I've been all over the place. Nate, Traveling man. what did you do? What did you do? What, what, what yeah, was come the on, result? Give us some of the juicy goss from the yeah. Billiards Expo. Who got, who got drunk and committed some crimes or anything like that? Who, who was, it that, looks would, that would be Nate. <laughs> that would be Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to look very far for that. <laughs> they it answered all like, your questions when it comes to drinking. It, it definitely looks like Shane uh, proved he can play super high level in short races. So there's that. Uh, yeah, especially when uh, especially when longevity comes into it. That's that's a lot of pool, man. Those it's days huge. are the long. Well, the guy is, 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 is in, the guy is is scarily in good shape you know it's almost like he's sneakily in good shape to be able to do that you know yeah. He, yeah. he runs quite a bit when he's gearing up he he draws yeah. and runs and stuff puts him i do think it was interesting to look at you know i i did take a look for for the bd live show a look at the um plp in terms of because it was races to five short race to five and all that stuff americans versus your team usa players versus team europe players uh, over the course of that event. And it was really, it was pretty interesting. It was the U S ended up winning. Yeah. I think they went 16 and 12. Um, and Europe actually had a losing record. Yeah. But you've uh, got, you've, you've got, you've got to remember that is with, with the, the, the three Americans that are actually good at Moscone. <laughs> yeah. Well, and but they played, but all five European players were in it. So they were playing. Yeah. Okay. But you play. didn't, but you didn't have the other, you, you, for it to be a proper balance, you need another two Americans in there. Yes, exactly. Americans, 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 
if you're looking, if you're looking at Shane doesn't play well in this format against these types of guys, you know, he went yeah. eight and two. So you know, so if you're looking to pull something out of it that you that you could get some hope for, um, there was something in there that was like, okay, well, you know, they, they showed up and they played pretty well against uh Team mm-hmm. Europe and and really um, you know it was it, it was just kind of a different way to look at that event. But it's in but it's individual. That's the difference. It's an individual. PLP is individual, not the team format. That's the well, historically, actually, the U.S. has well, done still, well. It's still and... Shane against Josh in a race to five. It's Shane against Jason in a race to five. It's Sky against David Alcade in a race to five. You know, that's where you look for the commonality. Yeah. And uh, so I would, it was, I would it was like just, to know. It was just a still fun, difference. It was just a fun, fun little exercise to kind of go through. Yeah, for sure. So now, so now America, our favorite from a Scotty Cup again. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> We're gonna play with three guys. If, if, if they bets. listen to Raymond's, if I'll, they I'll, listen I'll, to Raymond's, I'm happy. I'm happy to bet. I'm happy to bet on the underdog. It's okay. Just wait. <laughs> when I when, when I drop a 15 foot alligator in their locker room, okay, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're gonna be welcome to Florida proper. I promise. Yeah. Just keep <laughs> keep in mind that two out of the three of those uh, two out of the three players or I should say three players are switching equipment within a couple of weeks of that event. And two of the three were European between Jason and David switching equipment. Fedor obviously was switching equipment too, but that like a week before yeah. come, come Moscone cup. I think that uh, the players are going to be a little bit more in tuned. And if the, and if the European players aren't in tune with their equipment, guess what? They're not going to make the team. <laughs> Where those players on the U.S. side are playing it no matter what, even if they're not in tune with their equipment. Yet. Yeah, I feel like probably, I mean, Jason's probably proved that he's he's made the turn, you know, with his new gear. Obviously, winning a ranking event is already on the team. You don't have to worry about it. Right. But yeah, you know, just, yeah. just as far as like you look at vulnerability, you know, for the guys that are there, David looks very vulnerable. I, I, I don't really see him. He might have like last season where he made like a late season kind of lock in and like won a couple tournaments and got going, but he's probably going to need something like that. But I see a lot of the young guys that are coming strong for Europe probably have a new guy on the roster, and it's probably David's spot. That that I would say at least one. Yeah, at least at one. At least yeah. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's too many guys Watch that are it. just. I don't know. Hard. I don't know that FSR makes it. He has, he hasn't looked anything close to what he looked like two years ago. Well, well he's the biggest. Probably the biggest Probably the biggest decider is going to be whether Jason makes it as a as a, a points player. Yeah, yeah. Watch out for Moritz. Moritz. Uh, <laughs> At the end of the day, we're, Moritz, we're, right? yeah. the, 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 we're going to know, we're going to know mid June probably at least three players on the European team mid June after the World Championships is finished. Yeah, right. well, is, one player the makes one of the world championship it. and it's over. Yeah, exactly. If you get if you get if you get two Europeans in the last in, in the the last four mm-hmm. of the world championships, that's three of your players. Those two and Jason. Final four <laughs> is going to be four Asians, so don't worry. About it. <laughs> <laughs> not one, not one, not one. All Americans. All Americans. Ray, Raymond's going to win. Raymond's going to be uh, final four. For what? That, for the more importantly, okay. that would be awesome. I need a, I need a spot. I. I where do where, more well, importantly, where are we going out in Florida? My, my preparation so far from Moscone Cup has been watching the series Florida Man, and I'm really excited about going to Florida because apparently it's just full of stupid people. There, <laughs> there's, a, there's an Instagram page you should follow by the same name, at Florida Man. Go follow. Yeah. So have you ever played the Florida Man birthday game, Mark or uh, uh, Jim? No, but I, I think put, I might be playing it when I've had a beer. You put uh, – so here, we'll, we'll, we'll do yours. When's your birthday? Uh, 22nd, 22nd of May. So May 22nd. What you do is you put in uh, your birthday and then you type in Florida man. And then you just read the headlines. Yours are man arrested after telling. Wait, let's go. Man arrest. Get out of here. Man arrested after telling playground where babies come from. After telling playground where babies come from. Yep. <laughs> I don't even, is that even English? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of. <laughs> uh, Florida man climbs playground equipment, allegedly yells to children about how babies are born. Uh, good thing. Good thing. <laughs> see, I can't wait to go to Florida. It sounds brilliant. <laughs> Let's see. There's, there's got to be another one around here. What's another one around here? Just like whales. So Florida man loses his arm after a gator attack behind a bar. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like something that could happen. It happens. It does. Florida's that place. Yeah. All right. 
I got a blast yeah. stuff in here. Yeah. Um, wait, 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 we got to do yours. We got to do yours, Mike. Yours was yesterday, right? So, a was it yesterday, Mike? Eight, Florida what? man. Florida man accused of using. Chi Whoa, this might be a dark one. Florida <laughs> man accused of using children to roam the streets to collect money for fake nonprofit. <laughs> Get your bilious digest, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Advertising sales are down. I'm having to hit the street. Seems like an awesome spot, you guys. Seems like, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Florida man gets drunk at Disney Springs and warns police that they better hope he is never their nurse. Return of the Jedi, <laughs> returning to theaters, and more. Good. Thank you. Good. All right. All right. That's, that's nice. Florida nice. man. I'll see you. Good stuff. Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll catch you Bye next guys. week.